confession this morning that your name is powerful and your name is glorious king of all the glory and this morning to your father we just commit ourselves to you king of all the glory as you hear your word about father won't you come through and speak to us to your lord in a language you can understand to your father and also at our level jehovah master we know you never gather your people in vain jehovah god we are here, dear Father, because you know you have a word for us. To carry us through, dear Father, the coming we King of all the glory. Until we meet together on Sunday in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we send out to you, to your Lord, come and take over. This is your space, Jehovah Father. Come, King of all the glory. We thank you because you know you are going to encourage us this morning. You are going to rebuke us, Abba Father. Oh God and our Master, you are going to fill us. We are other things have left us dry, Jehovah God. We stand here because you know you are already here, dear Father, ready to do us good. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's appreciate the worship team. Thank you. God bless you. We may have our seats. Thank you for coming into the house of the Lord. Thank you for keeping the appointment because the Lord is already here, ready to do us good. I want to thank God for this great morning that he has given unto us. This being the second Sunday in this new year of mounting up. And I believe you are all expectant to mount up this year in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank our bishop and our mom, Pastor Alice, for giving me this chance to share what the Lord has put in my heart. I believe it is for me and for you because this is a journey. The Bible says that we inspire one another in good works because this is a journey. My name is Beatrice Waitaka. I know we may have visitors in this place because this is a good place. And every Sunday we have visitors. And I want to thank God for this chance. This morning, I want to share the word of the Lord. And the title of my message is, God wants you to give thanks. It is you. The Lord is so in particular that it is you to give thanks. Not for us. It is you to give thanks. Thank you is our password. Thanksgiving can mean so many things in different ways to different people. The Lord requires us to intermix our praise and our, and our thanksgiving in every service we render to the Lord. When we give him praise, accompany that praise with thanksgiving in every service you render to him. Giving thanks in the kingdom of God is a way of life. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you say, Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you say that. Only kawaida. But the Lord requires you to give him thanks. Because remember, you are many last night. Some never saw the light of this day. Therefore, for you to see the light of this day, the Lord requires a thanksgiving from the bottom of your heart. And it is one of the main attributes in the life of a believer. Are you a believer this morning? The Lord requires thanksgiving or giving thanks from the bottom of your life. Jesus' life was marked by thanksgiving. And because of this trait, many miracles manifested around him. Everything Jesus did before he performed any miracle, he first of all gave thanks. Even the bread, even raising Lazarus, everything that he did, first and foremost, he gave thanks to his father because he knew he can do nothing on his own. He relied on the power from his father. The Bible says from the, in the book of Psalms 100 and verse 4, that is our key verse this morning, enter with the password. This is from the message translation. It said, enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. When you open that door with the password of thank you, when you start talking, Talk about his praise. And then you bless him and worship him. After that, present your request. Enter with a password. Thank you 
no matter what you have. Thank him, sorry, no matter what you have gone through. And if you can look back last year, in your records, you can see it was the worst year. But for some people, it was the best year. So to put us all on the same platform, those the year has been, was bad, for those the year that was good, let's all meet at the platform of thanking him. Because he has a reason why you have come this far. Maybe you are sick, but today you are healed. Maybe you had expectations, and I know at the, every beginning of the year, we have our own expectation, and we put them down. This is my resolution for this year. And some of them did not meet your qualification last year. And therefore, this morning you are saying, what can I thank God for? Remember, flashback, the people who are alive with you, today they are no more. You are sick, today you are healed. You prayed for a loved one to be well, but unfortunately, he be they became well forever. What do I mean? They passed on. Thank God because you are remnant. And you is a remnant. The Lord expects a thanksgiving from you. A thankful heart. The Lord, thank you because I didn't deserve this. You know we are all sinners. Falling short of the glory of God. But the Lord is so gracious. He carried you through to this year. So that you can mount out. Mount up where? From down. You are so, those self-pity party, he wants you to mount up this year and leave behind what happened the last year and leave behind what happened the other years. Therefore, my prayer is have an attitude and a heart of thanksgiving. It did not materialize what you had last year, but who knows what will happen this year. God is a God of acceleration. He can accelerate what you wanted last year, even for this year, only if you can learn how to give thanks. When I see few The Lord wills, the Lord will, wills us to be thankful all the time. Not only when things are good, but all the time. Pastor normally tells me, even if somebody passes on, look for the beauty in that death. Because there must be some beauty even in that death. Because if you look at life, friends, there's nowhere you are going to give thanks. Light, left, and center. We are all pressed, as Paul said. But one thing the Lord did you, that he requires thanksgiving from the bottom of your heart. You can come to church, you can serve, but where is your heart? Do you have a thanksgiving heart that what I'm doing now, I'm doing because I love the Lord and I am alive. And I've been privileged to call upon the name of the Lord. You and I know it's hard to give thanks in the middle of a self-pity party. But this morning, I'm requesting you, as I'm preaching to myself, Let's have a thanksgiving heart. Let's come out of that poor me. There are so many poor people than you. Poor me. You are not poor. Our focus is only on ourselves. When you open your mouth, everything that you say is about you. I, me, and myself. This day, come out of that self-pity party and begin to give thanks. Whatever has happened to your life, purpose to give thanks. You might have a mess to deal with. Yes, you must ha might have a mess because of where we are coming from. You must have a struggle to overcome, a story to tell, but don't stay there. Be an overcomer and, and move forward with the Lord because the Lord has a good purpose and he holds your future. You might be left behind because you are of your self-pity party that owe me. I, I was this and this. I used to give. Now I'm borrowing. Thank God for the time that you gave. And thank God because now you can have somebody to borrow because the Lord is taking you somewhere. I want to bring five reasons why we should give thanks and then we'll be done. <coughs> Number one, giving thanks glorifies God. When you give thanks, friends, you glorify God. You don't glorify your situation. You don't glorify your family or whatever you are going through. But you glorify God. Therefore, purpose to give thanks. In the book of 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 15, Paul says, Paul was saying to the church of Corinthians, he, was, he said, for all things are for your sakes, not some. Remember, he says, for all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. For all things, not some. All 
means even what you are going through, even that sickness, even that blessing, all things are for your sake. That grace. You see, you go through all these things by the grace of God. And you know the Lord cannot take you where. His grace cannot sustain you. So he says, for all things, for your start grace, having spread through the many, may cause dance giving to abound to the glory of who? To the glory of God. Paul is declaring his motive for all the sacrificial service he rendered to the church of Corinthians. Thanksgiving that abounded to the glory of God. Think of all the heartache Paul experienced in his ministry to the Corinthians. He was misunderstood, he was ridiculed, he was maligned, and even attacked for spreading the gospel of the Lord. Yet he selfishly spent himself in order that God's grace might reach more sinners. He went all this, through all this, so that his, the grace of God may reach to all sinners. Because the heartbeat of Paul was for the sinners. Because he knew where he came from. And the praise of the redeemed would ascend to God's throne. In the book of Luke chapter number 17, and verse number 10. This is the story of the, te of the ten lepers. So likewise, you, Jesus met the ten lepers between Jerusalem and, sorry, between Samaria and Galilee. And they, he, when he saw them, he had pity and compassion upon the ten lepers. And Jesus told them, go and show yourself to your priest. But along the way, one of them looked at himself and he saw he was, he, was, he was healed. And then he came back. When he came back, let me read from my notes. Uh, this, the, verse 17 strengthens the point when Jesus met the ten lepers in a village. Remember, it's not a town. It is a village between Samaria and Galilee. And this was what I was getting from this scripture. These lepers could not go to town because of their condition. So they were left in a village in between Samaria and Galilee. And this is where Jesus met them. Even this morning, it doesn't matter where you are. You might in, that, might in a situation like that village, but the Lord can also meet you where you are. If at all you can know how to give thanks. And so Jesus met them and told them to go show themselves to the priest. To the priest, not to their loved ones. This is another revelation. Not to their family members, but show yourself to the priest. So that this priest may, may have a confirmation that even lepers can be healed. But only one came back to say thank you. Can you be the one? Can you ask yourself this morning, being in this year, 2021, and hearing that it is the year of mounting up, have I ever sat, stood before the Lord and gave thanks or came back to say thank you like that one leper? Now, one of them, when he saw he has been healed, turned back. He didn't go to his family or to the priest. He turned back. Remember, he didn't reach to the priest. He just looked at himself and saw he's healed and then he turned back. When he saw he has been healed, glorifying God, with a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus, giving thanks to him. This man was a Samaritan. These are people whose salvation was not meant for them, but he came back to say thank you. Friends, this man knew that knowledge is the mother of devotion. Knowledge is the mother of devotion and all obedience. This man devoted himself and obeyed the Lord. And I want to bring to attention this morning that bl blind sacrifices will never please a seeing God. If our God is seeing, a blind sacrifice can never please him. So my prayer is learn to give thanks. Number two, Oh, before we go to number two, let me share a story. You know, even Jesus shared parables. For me, it is a story. There was a family that were, they were putting a perimeter wall round about their, their home. And at lunchtime, the owner of the house called the workers 
for lunch. When they came, they all, you know, they cannot enter inside. They all sat outside. And the house girl was called and, gave the, and served them food. And when they were given food, they started eating the food. But there was like a small boy. Thank God for Sunday school. And like a small boy asked the mother, Mom, these people did not give thanks for the food. They are eating like our, their dog. Me, I have a dog. Our dog is known as Nala. Those who have been close to me, they have heard a lot about Nala. Because Nala, he has become like part of our family. When we eat, Nala must eat. So this boy said, let me use Nala, our dog. This boy said, these people did not give thanks for the food. They ate like Nala. Nala does not have a God. So Nala, whatever comes his way, he eats without giving thanks. And this boy, this boy touched the heart of the mother. And the mother said, please hold to Nataka Kushukuru. And they gave. But you know, for those who are fast eaters, already three or four spoons or kwasha meza, but they don't give thanks. The Lord requires us to give thanks. Whatever we are going through, whatever he has given us, please help us to give thanks. Number two, a thankful heart recognizes God's goodness. A thankful heart recognizes God's goodness. Paul reminded Timothy of an important principle when he said in 1 Timothy 4.4, 4, for everything God created is good. This everything include what you are going through this morning and it is good. Are you unwell? It is good. Are you in luck? It is good because God created it and he said it's good. And nothing is to be rejected even if it is received with thanksgiving. Even if with that you are, you are in luck this morning, tell the Lord, I know yesterday I had. Today is only the day that I'm in luck. Yesterday I was unwell. Yesterday I was well. It is only today that I am unwell. Receive everything with thanksgiving. Some deceivers in the church of Ephesus refused to affirm God, created everything good. In the book of 1 Timothy 4, 3, and they said, they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. We are believers this morning and we know the truth that whatever comes away, God made it for our good and is sanctified so that it can also be beneficial to us. But by gratefully receiving and enjoying God's gifts, believers fulfill the noble intention for which they were created. And in Romans 11:36, Romans 11:36, for from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Number three. An unthankful heart characterizes fallen humanity. An unthankful heart characterizes fallen humanity. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2, the Bible says, but now this, that in the last days, previous thing, th times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy. Paul, from that scripture, Paul is trying to emphasize and add onto the list ungrateful people. And this is the attempts that you are living. People are so ungrateful. You do something to somebody, maybe you have an expectation, but there's no thanks. Even the Lord is saying, the way you felt when you did this to that person and you are not, they did not thank you, the same I am feeling. Because I did this to you, this to you, and you never even said thank you. You take things for granted. Ingratitude characterizes fallen humanity. 
in the last days, and these are the days that you are living in gratitude. Gratitude keeps our attitude focused on the Lord's goodness. When you have a lot of gratitude from your heart, it focuses on the Lord's goodness. He is still good when things are bad. He is still good when we are sad. He is still good when we doubt. He is still good when we struggle. So we remain thankful regardless of our situation. The closer we get to the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more wicked men become. Because it has been prophesied, prophesied and it must come to pass. In the book of 2 Timothy 3.13, 2 Timothy 3.13, the Bible says, While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation, if you want to be holy, be holy to the end. You want to be wicked, be wicked to the end. Because in all ways, there is a reward. When you are wicked, there is a reward. When you are holy, there is a reward. Therefore, the choice is yours. It shouldn't surprise us to see unsaved people going through life complaining, bitter, angry, thankless, without any gratitude, expecting to receive everything good that comes their way and is floating where they don't. This is what we see in the people that are not born again. But for us that are born again, we laugh when others are crying. We rejoice when others are not rejoicing because you know where our hope is and where our strength is. We expect such thankless expressions from unbelievers because thankfulness is abnormal for the unbeliever but normal for the believers. This is normal because this is not our home and we must go through all this that requires in this world because this is not our home. This is a journey. We are on a journey. And therefore, whatever comes to you, remind you of yourself that this is not my home. And weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Number four, thanksgiving is a common part of worship. Thanksgiving is a common, not an ordinary, it is a common part of worship. Another story. I, I know we have heard about this one, but let me say, for those who have never heard about it, we are told, or the ones who don't say that, when you wake up in the morning, the Lord releases two angels, an angel of thanksgiving and an angel of prayer request. And he says, Go down, you are an angel to Beatrice today. So my angel comes down. The moment I wake up in the morning, my angel comes to me. These two angels, one is supposed to take thanksgiving, and the other one is supposed to take prayer request. But believe you me, the angel of prayer request, he doesn't stop. He takes, comes down, goes the whole day until I retire in bed. But the angel for thanksgiving, He's sleeping on the chair because he's not busy. Which angel is busy in your life this morning? Is it the angel of thanksgiving or the angel of prayer request? Which angel? That is a personal exam. The psalmist calls us to an attitude of thanksgiving when he writes, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to his name. Bless his name. The Lord knew we'll have prayer requests. The Lord knew we'll have needs. The Lord knew we'll have desires. The Lord knew what we'll go through. But he says one thing. You enter his gates with thanksgiving. Worship and praise. And then after you give him what the requests you have and the list that you have. A man by the name of William Hedricks Ken says, when a person prays without thanksgiving, he has clipped or cut short the wings of prayer so that it cannot rise. I come again 
When I pray, or when you pray without thanksgiving, you clip or you cut short the wings of your prayer so that it cannot rise. How many prayers are just here at the ceiling that you have offered this year and last, especially last year? How many prayers have never reached the throne of God because there was no thanksgiving? Even being alive is a thanksgiving. But you could not even say thank you. Or I could not say, let me make it personal. I could not even say thank you. My prayer was full of complaining. Look at this. I asked you for this. You gave it to so and so. Look how you blessed so and so. Have you forgotten me? Am I still in your plan? Those are the kinds of prayer that you pray. Therefore, you have chopped off the wings of your prayer. And you expect your prayers to reach the throne of God. They are just at the ceiling. My prayer is, let your prayer have wings so that it can rise up to the throne of the Lord. And they, when it rises to, rise to the throne of the Lord, what the Lord will do, he will release your answers. When you enter God's presence, harboring in gratitude, your worship is unacceptable. It doesn't matter how you're going to sing. People will be blessed, but you, you will remain the same. My prayer is you don't come as I become a signboard. That this is Nairobi. This signboard says Nairobi, but it never goes to Nairobi. It stands there. He has come, he has go. It stands there. My prayer is you don't become a signboard, but make your heart to be full of gratitude. When people are crying, please laugh because you know your joy comes from the Lord. And the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. When the early church met in the New Testament, one of its main purposes was to give thanks to God. One was to give thanks. When we meet in our home cells, when we meet in our networks, what is our purpose? What do we give first priority? Is it our request? Is it who have done this? Is it our, our needs? But first and foremost, it was to give thanks. Because they knew when they give thanks, the Lord is going to hide them. Remember the church was in a lot of persecution. And they knew when we give thanks, the Lord will come through for us. What we are going through now is just a matter of giving thanks. Lord, I thank you. Because today I don't have. Yesterday I had. And because I know tomorrow will be better than today. Lord, I purpose to give you thanks. And the enemy, when you give thanks, the enemy runs in steam. Because you know you have touched the heart of God. Paul other letters remind believers to express their thankfulness and thereby distinguish themselves from the ungrateful, unbelieving culture. This year, purpose to distinguish yourself from that group. If it doesn't make sense, doesn't build you, distinguish yourself from that group, from that chama, from that ladies, from that you chama to dada. Distinguish yourself. If all they do, it is request and complaining. Separate yourself from that so that you can be able to mount up because you can never mount up with that, with that, with that heart of in, being in gratitude. The Lord requires you to give thanks. Look at how many years you have in this world. Thank God there's no Sunday school child here. How many years have you lived in this world? You can be grateful. When I see fever, in the book of Ephesians 3, 5, 3, and 4, but fornication and no uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as is fitting for saints. Verse 4. Neither fitness, no foolish talking, no cause jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. The Lord is emphasizing this morning. Giving, this word will separate us from the world. When the word is crying, we are laughing. When the word is complaining, we are giving thanks. This is the only thing. They're going to distinguish you from the unbelievers. That whatever comes my way, I purpose to give thanks. And I purpose to rejoice. Giving thanks. Number five. A thankful heart deflects godly humility. A thankful heart Reflects godly humility. The occasion of your thanksgiving, as well as what you give thanks for, says a lot about your spiritual maturity. 
the occasion and what you are giving thanks for says a lot about your spiritual maturity. This year, we purpose to grow. If our spiritual maturity was in five, this year, purpose that we are going to lift it to, to six so that people can know that this person is giving thanks. Whatever she's going through, whatever is going through, then this person is born again. Our spiritual maturity. Gratitude to God shows our humility. When you give thanks in that circumstance, it shows your humility. That I'm doing this because I know there is one who is fighting my battles. The Bible tells us to be thankful for all people and all things. All people and all things. Things, this may come your way and you see, this one was not meant for me. It was meant for who? It was meant for you. Because the Lord knew you will overcome. Have you ever thought what a list of all things includes? This list concludes corrupt governments. We thank God for personal medicine, for praying for our nation. This, all these things include our government, our leaders, unjust employers, bitter spouses, unruly children, severe illnesses, economic collapse. All things. Not some. So whatever you go through, whatever I go through, the Lord knew. At such a time, you go through this. And he has already overcome for you. Please don't give up. Fight to the end. Philippians 4, 6. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. That all is the same all that we had for all things. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart. Remember, this peace will not guard your body. And the afflictions afflict this body. But this peace will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Therefore, my prayer for you this year and for myself is that we are going to seek the Lord more than we, we, we sought him last year. Now we are in the 40 days of prayer and fasting. And maybe you are here, you have not even attempted one day. You are saying, it's a Monday. Monday, in a kujani, it's a Monday. Monday will come and, 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 and pass. But my prayers, today is the 10th day for all those who started on the first day of this year. Maybe it is your fifth day. Maybe you have not started. But my encouragement to you this morning is that you go, you move with the movers. Don't be left behind. Even if it's one week, please be accounted for. Because when the blessings will come upon this altar, you'll be a partaker of those blessings. So even if you want to mount up, obedience will be key in this year. Because you say, I cannot mount up. Why? Because I have one wing. And you know, you must have two wings for you to mount up. My prayer is, make this year a difference in your life. Only one kind of person is able to express gratitude for those things. And this is a humble Christian. Whatever comes your way, you have that gratitude. Because you are a, a humble Christian. Believers know they don't deserve anything from God but judgment. So, like the early church, they sing hymns while they suffer in prison. Imagine you're in prison and you're singing hymns. And this we find in the book of Acts 16.25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to, th to, to them. Paul and Silas, remember they had no sin. They had no sinned, but they were in prison. But they made use of that prison. They remembered they are born again. They remembered they came with their God. So they purpose in Wakati Wakesha. Midnight Wakesha in Ashikawa Muzuri Sana. They remembered after in Ikesha, we can also sing hymns to our God. You will laugh when others are crying. Paul and Silas made use of the time they were in prison. Or rejoice when they are persecuted for the name of Christ. You rejoice. You say, I'm going all through this. Not because that I sin, but because of the name of Jesus. They rejoice. And that we find in the book of Acts 5.41. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. Can you be counted worthy? Can you, they, they did not complain, 
but they rejoice because God had counted them worthy to suffer. Not worthy to rejoice, not worthy to go to state house. I have been called, I have an invite from the president that I've been worthy. The Lord has seen me worthy to be called to state house, but they counted them worthy. To do what? To suffer for the gospel. Friends, this is a journey. And remember this, we have an enemy in this world. And a full-time enemy, a full-time enemy, you cannot fight a full-time enemy when you are part-time Christian. You have to be full-time. Therefore, this year, as you purpose to mount up, know yourself. Humble Christians view every bitter thing as sweet and rejoice always. Philippians 1.18, that is the last scripture. <laughs> Philippians 1.18, but that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine. The message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice and I will continue to rejoice. Whatever we go through, let's purpose to rejoice. Your capacity for thankfulness directly relates to your capacity for joy. What is your capacity for thankfulness? The same capacity will be for your joy. A happy heart is a grateful heart. When your heart is happy, you be grateful. A happy heart is a grateful heart. Be an aggressive appreciator of God. A mark of mature faith is an ever grateful heart. You are forever grateful. That is a mark of maturity. A wounded heart cannot see beyond its own heart and anger. When you are wounded, you cannot see beyond your anger. You cannot see beyond your heart. There is no gratitude, only disappointment with the God and people. Whoever comes your way, is it people? You are even ungrateful with God and is the one who gave you life and the breath this morning. The heart of Jesus hurts when we hurt. When you are hurting, Jesus also hurts. His spirit enters into our, our pain with comfort and compassion. As I said, in this journey, you are not alone. So we are in, when you are in pain, Jesus is in pain with you. And his spirit enters into your heart with the compassion and comfort, no matter what you have encountered or encountering. Remember, gratefulness is God's antibiotic. You want to take an antibiotic this morning? When you go to hospital, first and foremost, you look for antibiotic. Gratefulness is the Lord's antibiotic when you are grateful. Gratitude to God is the language of those who love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Your language is supposed to be grat gratitude. Thankfulness to our Heavenly Father goes directly to his heart. When you give thanks to the Lord, thankfulness goes straight to his heart. Like for those who, who receive mails from other countries or from other counties, in the evening, I have worked in a bank, and we used to send passes to the other branches. You put that envelope or that parcel in a, in a bag, the, the security comes and takes it to Nakuru. Let's, let's, let's use Nakuru. Ov overnight, it is taken to Nakuru. In the morning, the first thing in the morning, they open the bag and the letters are issued. That's what happens to our God. When you have a heart of gratitude, whatever you tell him, it goes straight to his heart, like a parcel that goes overnight, direct or express. This year, for us to mount up, remember, gratitude, especially on us those who model thankfulness. Therefore, we are all going to mount up, but in different speed, depending with our thankfulness. When you thank God from the bottom of your heart and also thank him, it, it all depends where the thanksgiving is coming from. Therefore, we are not going to mount up in the same speed. The, the, your speed will determine the thankfulness from where it is coming from, from the bottom of our hearts. What can you release to Jesus for him to handle? What can you release? Is it a relationship? Is it a marriage? 
Is it a health issue? Is it a past pain? Let go and let God do his work of grace. Let go. Let God do his work of grace. You cannot do the work of grace. Only God can do the work of grace. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you and we want to bless you this morning. We lend our hearts to you, Jehovah Father, because we know thankfulness or thanksgiving, it is a seed. And only you, dear Father, can plant it in our heart so that we can nurture it, dear Father, and make it grow. And so that this year, dear Father, we will be able to mount up with the wings as eagles. We want to bless you because you are coming to restore all that the Kakoms have eaten. We want to bless you, Jehovah Father, because you are coming to heal us. But Father, we have a lot of luggage that you are carrying because of last year and the other years, dear Father. We even had expectations and resolutions last year, dear Father, that we did meet. And therefore, it is my prayer this morning that you are coming through for us, Abba Father, creating in us a clean heart, Jesus, that we can walk it over again with you. I want to honor you and I want to bless you this morning because I know that you're doing a new thing because you love us with an unconditional love. You love us to your Father with an everlasting love. There's nothing to your Father in you more than love and compassion. We bless you and we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.